Arvate Vasudevaya Om Namo Arvate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya I'd like to welcome our guests outside here. You can come inside if you like, it's a little wet out there. <coughs> um, so every morning, oh, it's a bit loud. Every morning we, um, we sing some songs, we hang out together, and then we read from one of the scriptures from, from India. Um, in our tradition, we follow two main scriptures and then supplementary scriptures. So the first one is called the Bhagavad Gita. Some of you may have heard, maybe not. And the second one is called the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is what we're going to read from today. They've been around for a very long time. Uh, It's said that these scriptures were put into writing around 5,000 years ago, but they were an oral tradition. A bit like in Australia, we have the Aboriginal culture. Not so much writing went down. It was all just given down by the elders to the youngest, and it was passed on in this way. Generally, in our culture these days, we don't have that system so much. The elders don't pass down their wisdom to the younger generations. So therefore, the, the elders are kind of useless in our society. They just play bowls and get on a caravan and drive around Australia. <laughs> um, so we'll read from the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's, uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam is a very large body of work. It has 18,000 verses. So we're reading in the second canto, which is just at the start of this big book. And up here, this is a Sanskrit, um, Sanskrit for Sanskrit language is also a very old language. Many of the languages that we're familiar with originated from this Sanskrit language, Latin, Greek. European languages. So I'll give it a go. I'm not really a very good Sanskrit pronouncer, but I'll do my best. Okay. So to go Antaram Punyata. Niruda Sapyatano Nipekshaha Stitwa Mohuta Dam Akanta Jistir Nirbija Mudan Vishrajit Parangataha Tasma from there. Bhuvo, of the eyebrows, Antaram, in between, Unayata, should be brought in, Niruda, by blocking, Sapta, seven, Ayantana, outlets of the light air, Anapekshaha, Independent of all material enjoyment. Stitwa. By keeping. Mohurta. Of a moment. Adan. Half. Akunta. Back home. Back to Godhead. Dristi. One whose aim is targeted, targeted like that. Nirvidya, punching, Mordhan, the cerebral hole, Vishrajet, 
should give up his body. Param, the Supreme, Gataha, having gone to. So this is a translation of the Sanskrit. Thereafter, the Bhakti Yogi should push the light air up between the eyebrows and then, blocking the seven outlets of the air life, the life air, he should maintain his aim for going back home, back to Godhead. If he is completely freed from all desires of material enjoyment, he should then reach the cerebral hole and give up his material connections, having gone to the Supreme. And this is a commentary on that verse. <clears throat> we have some guests here for those watching at on YouTube well. <clears throat> the process of giving up the material connections and returning back home, returning home back to Godhead to the Supreme is recommended herein. The condition is that one should be completely free from this desire for material enjoyment. There are different grades of material enjoyments in respect to duration of life and sensual gratification. The highest plane for sensual enjoyment for the longest period of time is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in 9.20. All other material enjoyments and one should be thoroughly convinced that he has no need of such a long duration of life even in the Brahma Loka planet. He must return home back to Godhead and must not be attracted by any amount of material facilities. In the Bhagavad Gita 259 it is said that this sort of material detachment is possible to attain when one is acquainted with the supreme association of life. Param Drishta Nivartate. One cannot be freed from material attraction unless he has complete understanding of the nature of spiritual life. The propaganda by the certain class of impersonalists that spiritual life is void of all varieties is dangerous propaganda to mislead the living beings into becoming more and more attracted by material enjoyments. As such, persons with a poor fund of knowledge cannot have any conception of the Param, the Supreme. They try to stick to the varieties of material enjoyments, although they may be, although they may flatter themselves as being, being Brahman realized souls. Such less intelligent persons can have any can have cannot have any conception of the param as mentioned in this verse, and therefore they cannot reach the supreme. The devotees have full knowledge of the supreme world, the personality of Godhead and his transcendental association in unlimited spiritual planets called the Vaikuntas. Herein Akunta Dristi is mentioned. Akunta and Vaikuntha convey the same import. And one who is who has his his aim fixed upon the spiritual world and personal association with the Godhead can give up his material connections even while living in this world. This param and this param dharma mentioned in several places in the Bhagavad Gita are one and the same thing. One who goes to the param dharma does not return to the material world. This freedom is not possible even by reaching the topmost loka in the material world. <clears throat> the life air passes through seven openings, namely the two eyes, two nostrils, two ears and one mouth. Generally, it passes through the mouth at the time of an ordinary man's death. But the yogi, as above mentioned, can control the life air in his own way, generally releasing the life air by puncturing the cerebral hole in his head. The yogi therefore blocks up all the above mentioned seven openings so that the life air will naturally burst forth through the cerebral hole. This is a, a sure sign of a great devotee's leaving the material connection. <clears throat> so there's a lot of information there for our new people. Um, 
basically in in understanding what it means to live a spiritual life there's different um, different processes by which we can do that according to our desire and according to what kind of goal we're looking to achieve through our spiritual life so in the in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam the process that is recommended to give us the most highest spiritual realization and the most intimate connection is called Bhakti Yoga there are other yoga processes does anyone know what the word yoga means? Just out of curiosity. Yoga. <clears throat> the word yoga means to link or reconnect. So, which is very interesting because the word religion has a very similar meaning. So, in Greek, re legales means to reconnect, rejoin, as in bring together. And yoga has the same concept. So what are we connecting? What are we bringing together? We're bringing together our individual consciousness with the Supreme Consciousness, the God, the universe, whatever tag you want to put on that. But the idea is that we're disconnected right now. So in our world that we're living in now, there's, there's many problems. And we see that a lot of people <clears throat> feel this disconnection and they're trying to find some way to fill this hole in their life. Whether it's through social media, whether it's through partying, having a good time, boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, getting all the, the latest gadgets. There's so many ways that we try and fill this hole to feel that, that completeness. <clears throat> but somehow or other it always kind of falls short of the mark. We're always never satisfied. <clears throat> but when we try and connect on the spiritual level, then that satisfaction or that incompleteness becomes complete. Kind of sounds a bit funny, but <clears throat> we are a spiritual being inhabiting material body. So our bodies we have, we have boys and girls bodies, young bodies, old bodies, big bodies, little bodies, you know, so many different types of bodies. But they're like our vehicles. So we're a, a spiritual person and we're navigating in this material world using these vehicles, these bodies. <clears throat> so if we just take care of the body and forget about the driver, this is the disconnect that we're seeing in our world. So we're enamored by our bodies, especially when we're young. Because it's like we've got our new fast car we just want to go fast, we want to try it out, we want to make sure it all, you know, push it to, it, to its limits and, and just enjoy youth and the strength of the senses and everything like that. <clears throat> but at the same time, if we don't also um, inquire who I am, who we are as, as a spiritual being, and we just focus on our vehicle, on our body, then this is where that disconnect comes. So it's two things. We have to take care of our body. We understand it's our vehicle. And we, we have to take care of it. And we have to take care of the desires and the needs of the body. But at the same time, the spirit soul also has desires and needs. So it's, it's a two-way thing. We have to um, take care of both needs. Primary need is the spirit soul. Because 
that's us, that's us. We are that conscious person. When we look in the mirror, like most of us here are still reasonably young, apart from me and a couple of others, but <clears throat> when we look in the mirror in the morning or in the, in the night before we go to bed, we see, we observe him, our body is changing. And as the years go on, you know, we were all young little kids, then we grew up, we started to go to school, and then we were teenagers, and then we become adults, and then we, you know, we start to have our own families, and the grey hair start to come, the hair, you know, all kinds of stuff starts happening when you get a bit older. And then we, we start to really age, and then we'll pass away. But as we go through those different stages of our life, when we look in that mirror every time, that observer, that person who is watching that person getting older in the mirror, that is us. That doesn't change. That spirit soul is always the same. So we have to firstly understand that and then we will include us as that spirit soul in our activities in our day-to-day -day life. And in doing so in that way, we will be happy actually, we will be satisfied. <clears throat> um, so Bhakti Yoga is, is a process to learn how to live as a spirit soul again. Because we've forgotten that now. So, you know, when, you, when you're young, you've got your bike, your first bike, and you get your training wheels on, so you don't fall off. So you're riding, 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 and you won't fall off because you got your training wheels on. So until you, you understand how to <clears throat> to ride your, you know, you learn your steering and your balance, and then you take the training wheels off, then you can ride by yourself. So <clears throat> this bhakti yoga process, where we got our training wheels on on how to live as a spirit soul again, because we've forgotten that. So we, um, we're learning how to, how to act, how to live, how to share, how to love from the perspective of the spirit soul. And that's what Bhakti Yoga offers to, uh, to our world. It's very sweet, very beautiful. Um, it's not easy, like anything, because we have, we have our, this thing we call the mind. And our minds are crazy, mostly. <laughs> um, you know, one minute you're thinking of this, next minute you're thinking of that, next minute you're thinking of this, 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 that, I like that, I don't like that, I want that, I don't want that. So many things is going on. If, until you actually sit down and try to do like meditation, many of us, we don't even realize how crazy our minds are. But when you sit down and you try and, try and, uh, and be introspective and, and you'll see like our minds are just out of control. And that's okay, that's fine. It's part of, Part of the spiritual process is to become aware of these things. So we start off just being aware of how crazy our mind is. And then we're like, okay, if I can observe my mind, I can do something about it. I can change it to, to work in a better way, more positive for my well-being and, of course, everybody else's. You know, as many of these influences and, and people all over Instagram and Facebook are having <clears throat> so many quotes about in order to change the world we have to start with ourselves. So we have to um, <clears throat> we have to be the change we want to see. That's a common, common one we hear a lot. In order to change the world we need to change ourselves. So yeah, that's um, 
process of bhakti yoga, what we practice in this community. Basically, you'll find some kind of bhakti yogis in most cities in Australia and around the world, or all over the place. Um, so, you guys are here to experience something of what we do, I guess. So, you were going to camp out, right? Is that what was the idea about the rain? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. I lived out there for a good seven years. It's the best view on the farm, actually. Thank you. We're going to take you to breakfast at the Christmas village. Yeah. Thank you so much for explaining that so well nicely and hopefully they can ask you questions and come back. Yeah, come. Anytime anybody has any questions, just come sit with you guys or whatever. Maybe we can get you down there, I'll see you about. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so now for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you are all rascal. <laughs> Holding the head. Oh man. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, the hole in the head, I don't know so much about how to leave our body through passing our life airs up, but it's interesting, we can't even get to that point until we have no, no material desires, it says that particularly there right in the verse that we can bring our life airs to here, to the third eye. But in order to go from, to, to leave there, can't be any material desires. That's about all I can say. The process, I don't know about that, but. But, um, but this is, this raising of the life theirs. Um, you know, these kind of yogis, it's not a common thing to be able to do this kind of stuff these days. Therefore, Prabhupada is stressing in the purple that it's, it's necessary to develop this higher taste um, to, to understand that our material desires are there. <clears throat> but if we have to, if we want to attain the spiritual realm, the Vaikuntas, then it's necessary to to bring our consciousness to a place where we're not attracted to the material material stuff. We can use it, it's there, we have it, but it's not that we just falsely give it up, but we're not attached to it, whether it's our, our partners, our stuff, whatever it may be. So that's the important factor that I can see from this verse, like Prabhupada quotes, two verses from Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> 9.20, anyone know that verse? <clears throat> so he's talking like, the highest plane in the sensual enjoyment for the longest duration of life is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in 9.20. So that's, you go. The heavenly place to enjoy the sun of us. The sun of us, yeah. So, you know, we, we get enamored by the enjoyment we're getting from this world. But in the planet of Indra, it's, we can't even conceive of the enjoyment those guys are having up there. <laughs> um, so to get caught up in that again, it's... it's because of that level of enjoyment, like we get bewildered now on those planets, you know, they've got mangoes the size of elephants and they fall off the trees and they roll down the hills and they create rivers of mango juice. It's like, you know, we, we get one, we, we don't even get a mango every year here. <laughs> when we get a mango, we're like, oh my God, it's a mango. <laughs> So that's just, you know, apart from the sensual enjoyment of, you know, 
you can eat all day, your body is designed, you can just eat all day, you can, you know, sex, anything you want, you can just do it for as long as you want. Like here, we do something, we can't eat all day. You know, we eat and then we get full and we're like, oh. <laughs> we gotta go take a nap. <clears throat> but in the heavenly planets, our bodies are designed just to give us, to fulfill that pleasure. Uh, so there's, there's no, no limit. And the duration of life is also very long, like thousands and thousands of years. And then if you go up to Brahma Loka, like it's billions of years. Brahma Loka, like the enjoyment is more yogic, it's more, you know, they're meditating and they're doing stuff. But and the other verse was, <coughs> in order to return back to Godhead, must not be attracted to the amount of material facilities. So, what we just read there. In the Bhagavad Gita, 259. Does anyone know that one? Hmm. So that one is, you know, the, the yogi, although he, he may be attracted to the, the material sense objects, if he, he has acquired this higher taste, then he will not be um, <clears throat> he will not be attracted. Although all this stuff is around him, he he will use it, but it won't it won't um, bring him down. I guess you could say. <clears throat> so yeah, one cannot be free from material attraction unless he has complete understanding of the nature of spiritual life. Yeah. So spiritual life, we, we have to understand what we're doing. We can do all the stuff that we do, but if we don't know the why um, behind it, and it, it's kind of like mechanical, we, we really need to understand why we do what we do. Otherwise, there's no purpose or no meaning. Like, it's, it brings in uh, the intention into what we why we do things. Because otherwise, it's just like, hey, okay, get up, come to four thirty, come to the temple, Hari Bol, there's the deity, Hari Bol for You know, it's you're doing it, you're going through the motions, and there is still some benefit just for doing that. But when the intention when the attitude, when the, the focus is there, that's when bhakti becomes dynamic. And, and that's, uh, that's what it's all about. Okay, we'll stop here. Any questions, comments, corrections? Prabhu, <clears throat> ji. Well, as Bhano Swami was mentioning, like even in all these impersonal processes, without a bit of bhakti, they, they can't attain perfection, even in their practice, whether you know, there has to be that element of devotion. But yeah, Prabhupada, he, he um, like if you look in the verse, there's no mention of bhakti or anything in the Sanskrit. So I think it's one of his licenses to, to you know, he, he would bring in the meaning of the verse, and bring in some like extra words sometimes to give us a full understanding. Because <clears throat> therefore, we should, you know, if you live out the bhakti yogi, and push the life hair between the eyebrows. <clears throat> and, and this is like this, this chapter is the Lord in the heart, so it's not completely impersonal. Lord of the heart is Paramatma. 
So there's form there. It's but the process of the Sangha Yoga it can have can be devotional, but more often than not it's it's more mechanical because it's just about me doing my practice. Um, but yeah. I, I don't I didn't feel it was impersonal myself. Anyone else got a comment on that? A couple of verses back there is definitely one that was had very impersonal um, Therefore the yogi should merge his mind by his own light intelligence into the living entity and then merge the living entity into the, into the super self and by doing this a fully satisfied living entity becomes situated in the supreme stage of satisfaction so that he ceases from all other activities so that one kind of sounds it's got more of an impersonal twinge but I didn't think that one today No expert. Anybody else have a question, comment? Okay, Kantara Shriman Bhagavatam Ki. John. Hi. Talks about bursting through the cerebral hole. Hmm. So this is little, this is physical phenomena. That we see in the material world, or is it more subtle? I would say subtle. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's actually, there's actually a hole there. Uh, there's a hole in the soul that busts through that hole. So we could find, it's like you miss through the mouth, your mouth open. Mm-hmm. So we, we could find evidence of someone in the first hole. Mm-hmm. You could have a very great evidence. Huh. Generally, you miss through the mouth. Hello. You mentioned um, that there wasn't any real information on the process of this in the in the text. But um, is this is this in the same relation to I've like, heard in different places that one leaves the body either through the head or like the heart or things like that. I don't know, is there any more information elsewhere on 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 this process or you know, leading through the town shop or things like that? Or is, is it just this section here that mentions this? No, it's, it's mentioned in, in other places. Yeah. Prabhupada normally speaks about it in the purple sometimes. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to speculate a little bit, but I, I think I remember depends on your, like if you leave your body in a mode of ignorance, you leave through your anus. Um, mode of passion is through the mouth, and mode of goodness is through the crown chakra. Mm-hmm. If anybody can correct me on that. I've yeah. Yeah. Through the mouth means you're going to 
remain this ignorant and heavily cleansed or go back to God, depending on the consciousness of the person of the body. It's certainly a good sign if someone leaves with a mouth open. If they leave through the own passage, that's a degraded sign. And then again, the great yogis can burst out. And, and this section talks about all the perfect conditions for leaving the body. You know, the, the plants and in the lines, and it's all based on, like we said, you mentioned technique. The proper mentions and gift and other places, but the boat doesn't really matter. And if you guys are carrying it, yeah. if you engage in the devotional service, you will yeah. reach a success and guaranteed no matter how you leave the body. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, we're not. We're not striving to to do this when we're leaving our bodies. These are different different times. <clears throat> what about people who commit suicide and then they come across? Which way do they go through? No idea. <laughs> They attain this spiritual kingdom in the very self same body. Mm. But here we're going to be in that process where one has to, about the only has to leave through the whole. Can you comment on that? Well, the Pandavas are already fully enlightened beings, so their bodies are fully spiritual bodies too. Like when we, when an acharya or someone like that is put into samadhi, they don't burn the bodies because the body is con- considered spiritual. So they put them into samadhi, and and um, the Pandavas, you know, Arjuna, he went to the heavenly planets many times in his in his so-called material body, <laughs> and. Um, so, spiritual world, <laughs> why not? <laughs> well, he's mum too, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. Pranta Rashmana Bhagavatam Ki Jai!